This video will review the procedure for swallow screens in neurological populations. A swallow screen is a brief bedside test that gives us an idea whether a patient has aspiration or not. It determines the ability to give the patient food orally, medication orally and also identifies the need for a speech therapist or a nutritionist referral. Dysphagia is a very common symptom, particularly in stroke. It could lead to other complications such as aspiration pneumonia, premature morbidity, longer hospital stays, dependency and even compromised nutrition. An early swallow screen is always recommended, preferably within four hours of hospital admission. However, this may vary depending on different medical protocols. If it is not conducted, it is always recommended that a patient is kept kneel by mouth until a swallow screen is completed. If a patient has a previous history of dysphagia, the patient needs to be referred to a speech-language therapist. A swallow screen can be performed by an SLT but can also be performed by any trained health professional, particularly nurses. If a patient fails the screen, the patient must be referred to a speech therapist for further assessment. Most swallow screens use water in testing. This is based on instrumental evidence that a patient would experience penetration much higher in liquids than they would with non-liquids. However, there are exceptions. For an example, the GUS swallow screen protocol, which is used world over, uses over three consistencies, water, semi-solids and solids, and always starts testing with the semi-solid. Regardless of the protocol used, a swallow screen consists of two parts. The first part, or the indirect swallow test, is also known as the preliminary evaluation test. This is because it does not involve any food or liquids, but rather acts as an eligibility criteria for the second part, which is the direct swallow test. The direct swallow test involves food and liquid being administered to the patient. In this case, we will only be trialing with water. We will now show you the two parts of a swallow screening test. To start the first part of the swallow screen test, you need to check if your patient is alert and if the patient is oriented. The patient needs to be alert for at least 15 minutes in order to be eligible for a swallow screening test. In order to check for orientation, you can either use the GCS score or you can engage with the patient a little bit to see if the patient is able to respond to some of your questions. Kohomadada Hunding in other Apico Kohidamine Apino Spirit Cow the Gather Katia Ned the Langa Dua Langa than any idea. Kodu Kohidagi Kadi. We then move into a quick orofacial examination. Here you can only look for any signs of facial weakness and for tongue movement. Apihina mask a galamuda Mandia Balana. Then in one, eh? Oh. Then the way later, the other the patheter, me patheter, me patheter, then me patheter. Hurry. Then under the cutter in. Make sure that you check for the patient's oral hygiene before you progress into the second part of the swallowing exam. Cough is an important observation you need to make in this part of the swallow screening test. Under the husma car again, a kahin na balan pulu antarang haiye. <coughs> you next can observe for the person's voice by asking the person to say ah for a longer duration. Ah, any abnormalities with the patient's voice can indicate a dysfunction of the vocal folds. You then ask the patient to perform a dry swallow. A dry swallow is where you don't give the patient any kind of food or liquid orally. 
Instead, you asked the patient to take some saliva into the mouth and swallow as hard as they could. Here we will be observing for the patient's ability to perform a swallow and also the person's ability to perform a strong swallow on time. Khatata hodara kela tika kara kena thadingi li na baan tia kapi uda bala ma ma tada bella pe na auchara bala na na ohum aoi gaanta ati thadata gili na apa ho kela tika khatata rangi li na hari dan isse la vage apa ho aa kya na hondai by asking the patient to uh, say ah for a longer time or to phonate to voice after that swallow you can observe to see if the patient has a wet gurgly voice any change of voice quality could indicate that the patient has a high risk of aspiration due to possible pooling this marks the end of the first part of the swallow screen it is important that during this entire process you observe your patient to determine if the patient has any discomfort or changes in the patient's breathing pattern. If the patient fails any of the tasks that I've outlined in this first section, the swallowing screen needs to be stopped. It can be repeated after 12 hours or an SLT referral should be made for further assessment. We now move on to the direct swallow assessment, which can only be done if there are no issues in the direct swallow assessment. Here, we will be testing the patient using three trials of 5 ml, 10 ml, 15 ml, and a 50 ml water drinking test. The position of the patient may have changed by now, so you need to change the patient up a bit and make sure that the patient is sitting upright at least in a 60 uh, degree angle at this point. If the patient has slanted down, the patient needs to be then repositioned. Observe the patient's breathing before the water trials. Make sure that the patient is breathing with ease and this observation of the breathing needs to be continued throughout. Check if there is excessive saliva production of the patient. If so, suctioning needs to be done before this part of the swallowing test. We will now start the water trial test with 5 milliliters. To do this, you may use a medicinal cup or a syringe, whichever is appropriate with your patient. Hundred a gila the Ugre and the Latina the Mehari Namaki and a balan Chandra Castava Gatina the Chandra Hari Enangapitabe Cabomo Gila the Chandra Hundinda Ugre and the Latina the Kasavage? No. In a tabaka para karamu. Kasavage nani? No. Hari in a book. Honda Tagilina Amaru the Gilna Kota? No. Ugre and the Lavageti another? Kasavage? No. Hari. Chandra? Ah, Kiana Balana is a lavage? Ah. Hundai. You need to repeat these trials with 10 milliliters and 15 milliliters of water. In every trial, critical observations would be the presence of cough that can happen before the swallow, during the swallow, and after the swallow. Since a cough can happen even after a swallow, there needs to be a gap of at least three minutes between two trials. You also have to observe for any discomfort in swallowing and also for changes in voice. That is why we ask the patient to phonate to see if the voice sounds wet, gurgly or simply if there is any change of voice. Other observations need to include any discomfort in swallow or any delayed swallowing. 
If the patient shows no signs of aspiration for the water trials for 5 milliliters, 10 milliliters and 15 milliliters of water, we can now proceed into a cup swallow. In the cup swallow, we usually give the patient 50 milliliters of water for drinking in a single gulp. For giving the cup swallow, you need to carefully choose the utensils where you can use a cup which is not too deep, uh, alternatively a beaker but preferably a cup that is not too deep so that the patient does not have to tilt the head too much. Into such a cup, add 50 ml of water that is measured with a beaker and ask the patient to drink in one swallow. The observations you will make here is similar to the observations made for the 5 ml, 10 ml and 15 ml water swallow trials. Observe for any changes in voice or any discomfort. Throughout all of these trials, it is very important. If the patient passes the cup swallow test, then the patient is good to have food orally. However, during the entire trials, the patient should be observed for changes in breathing patterns or any signs of discomfort. If a patient is able to complete all trials in the water swallow test successfully, then that means that the patient has, be, has passed the most sensitive consistency and then can be given food orally. However, it is very important that a patient throughout the hospital stay is monitored for any signs of swallowing difficulties. If however the patient has failed any of the water trials, it is important that an immediate referral is made to a speech therapist. This marks the end of water swallow tests. It is very important that you observe the patient throughout these water trials to see for any changes in breathing pattern or any discomfort. Passing the water trials means that the patient has been tested and has passed the most sensitive consistency, that is liquids. So the patient can now take food orally. However, it is very important that you observe this patient throughout their hospital stay to make sure that they have no swallowing difficulties. If the patient fails any of the water trials, 5 ml, 10 ml, 15 ml or the cup swallow, it is important that the testing stops immediately, that the patient is placed nil by mouth and that an immediate SLT referral is made. It is also important that you maintain records of the screens conducted for the patient. Here you have to note down the name of the person who conducted the screen and the last time the screen was conducted. This is important for the continued care of the patient. testing ticker. Thank you.